Death Talk, episode 18, and we're back for another episode of Death Talk. We're recording a little bit later in the day, so I don't know how that will affect the show today, but uh, we'll see, and we'll explain. I'll explain why in this little bit, but uh, Mark, hello. Hey, hi, hello. Chris, how's it going? Hey, what's up? And good old Caleb. Hey. Hello, Caleb. Hey, Rich. You sound great. Thanks. You sound good. Oh, I just sound good? Fine. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) uh, Yeah, we're recording a little bit later today. During a thunderstorm. During a thunderstorm. So if this cuts out, that'll be really cool. Um, uh, I... uh, I, it was, it's my fault that we're late today. It's uh, actually, it's kind of everybody's... It's been a busy most, day. Mostly yeah, it's yours. a busy day. So. It's been a busy day, but um, I uh, just to fill you in, because I know people want to know why that we you know why we're recording late, um, there was shit in my bathtub. <laughs> did you, yep. did right, you wake up in the to, middle of the night? I have to ask you a question. Rich yeah. took a shit in his bathtub. Okay. Is it is it just like gross stuff in your bathtub or actual shit in your bathtub? So let me explain this, please. Um, I went down to my basement, uh, saw a little water coming out from. I, there's a bathroom in the basement. Saw a little water coming out, and I said, "Oh man, what could that be?" I go. You in have the bath- a bathroom in the basement? Yeah, yeah. Do you have a finished basement? Yeah, yeah. We don't it's use like it. We don't use it very often at all. So I don't go. This so- just in. This just in. Rich is a baller. All right, continue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bathroom in the basement. Well, when when we do an episode of Cribs at my house, I'll show you guys. What Rich is really saying is that there was shit in my bathtub because I live in his basement. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. Caleb couldn't <laughs> hold it, um, <laughs> but. I uh, went down there, there's a little bit of water coming out, and I noticed it was coming from either the toilet or the bathtub, I wasn't really sure, because they're right next to each other, so I walked over there, and, um, yep, there was sewage that was coming up from the bathtub, and, yes, I did see actual shit in there, so, (laughs) I, I had to wait I, had, I called a plumber, and then Trey told me, yeah, you're really not supposed to call plumbers for drain issues, which I didn't know about. Apparently there's beef between um, plumbers and people that clean drains. Did you guys know about that? I didn't know there was a difference. Yeah, so um, if, if, if any, uh, any listeners out there know what the why there's beef between these two professions, please let me know. I, I, was, I didn't realize, so I called the plumber, and then the plumber told me, yeah, you gotta call a, a drain person to do it. Uh, so I had to wait around for the drain person. So, anyways, yeah, there's no more shit in my bathtub. So, uh, that's all fixed. And, uh, I'm ready, uh, I'm ready to record today. There you go. That was a long intro, but I just, I wanted the people to know. It's not an everyday. That's not an everyday problem. <laughs> not everyone wakes up with shit in their bathtub. I mean, I'm sure some people do. I mean, Caleb, yeah, probably. You guys don't shit in your bathtubs. <laughs> You're taking it to a whole new level. Only thing that gets you know, me through the morning. I don't shit in the bathtub, but it might be easier, like easier to aim. You know. Okay, so in like middle school. At the YMCA, there would be a great big turd in the showers every fucking day. Someone just let loose? Every day. I don't know if it was a joke thing or if somebody was just like, yeah, you poop in here. That's what you do. I don't know. Well, dude, that's okay because you're like washing, you're showering. So the soap coming off of your body will clean that up like no problem. Yeah. Slides right out of there and it's cleaned immediately. I don't think that's how it works. No? It's science. (laughs) Think about it. Well, after uh, all this shit talk, let's uh, let's move over to Mark. <laughs> oh, that was good. In, in the newsroom with some great Death Wish news. Mark, tell us the news. Breaking shit in the bathtub. 
Bonds. <laughs> <laughs> so aside from the exciting news of uh, shit being in Rich's bathtub, uh, <laughs> this is probably the first time he's told us about this. He's probably a shit in his bathtub all the time. Um, so yeah, so Harm's Way just came out with a new music video for the song Left to Disintegrate. Uh, that's on the Death Wish YouTube page now. You should go watch it. It's an awesome video done by Max Moore like their first one was. Uh, the song comes from the album Rust, which is out now. If you haven't listened to it, go listen to it. Heavy as fuck. It's on uh, sale right now, too. On sale right now. Because uh, they're going to be playing... 20% off. Oh, there you yeah, go. Yeah, 20% off. All the bands playing Death Wish Fest Europe. Um, so, uh, since the last podcast, we now have uh, two new pre-orders up for new two new Death Wish releases. Bitter End's new album, Illusions of Dominance, is up now. Uh, there's uh, LPs, CDs, cassettes, and a new shirt design, and a hoodie. That is out June 30th, and the song Sting of Betrayal is on the YouTube page for Death Wish's YouTube page for you to listen to now. Um, yeah, so check that out. There's a bunch of cool colors, and uh, it's been a while since Bitter End's released some music, so that should be awesome. People should be excited for that. Uh, Self Defense Family. And Mark. Uh- one more, one more on, on sure. Bitter End. Uh, we just put a couple singles, uh, Sting of Betrayal and uh, Power and Control on Spotify. So you can listen to them there, too. There we go. Cool. Uh, Self-Defense Family's new album, Heaven is Earth, are also up now. It's coming out the same day on June 30th. LP, cassette. Um, is that on CD? No, it's not on CD. Yeah. Um, yes, it is. Oh, it is. Cool. Excuse me. I just, yeah, I just choked on water. <laughs> nice. Uh, yes. It is on CD as well. Cool. So LPs, CDs, cassettes, however you want to listen to music, you can. Uh, there are two new shirt designs. Really simple. Probably my favorite self-defense design we've had. It's really simple and really cool. Uh, yeah, so that comes out June 30th. Uh, there's a song from the album called Talia, which we released on a 7-inch a few months ago or last month. Uh, you can buy that now. There's still copies available. We're only pressing that one time. There's only 1,000 copies on black. So make sure you get that. That song is also on Spotify as well, and the B side of that seven inch has a um, exclusive song that's not on the new LP. So that's the only place you can hear it. And uh, another reminder that Fucked Up, Cold Cave, and Cult Leader all have new stuff coming out. All have pre-orders going out now, uh, and those are both coming out on June sixteenth. So that's coming up. The ship date for that's on the ninth. So get your pre-orders in now, and it shouldn't be too much longer to wait. Cool. Very cool. And uh, thank you for the news, Mark. Sure. Fantastic job, as always. Staying Thanks, up Rich. on the news. Uh, I forgot to mention, too, at the beginning of the show, um, we are doing film school with Rich, uh, but we're doing it at the end of the podcast. And reason being is that uh, we had a very special one for this episode. Uh, Caleb and I and Trey actually went to the movies we actually hung out outside of work, which was really odd. Dun, um, dun, dun. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, it wasn't odd. I was just joking. Uh, but we, uh, went to see Mad Max. So we're going to, we're going to put it at the end because it's so it might new. go a little bit long. Yeah. And it might be a little bit longer. And um, we're going to have to, we're going to have to do a spoiler alert this week since it is a new movie. Usually yeah. I don't care because yeah. we're just watching like classics, but. We'll, yeah. we'll have a little bit of respect this week. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Uh, so, yeah, we'll remind you at the end of the podcast as we're going to do it. But, uh, but yeah, so you might not want... If you haven't seen the movie, you might want not want to listen to that quite yet. You have to come back and listen to it when you after you see the movie. Uh, but after... Uh, Caleb, after you went to the uh, movies with Trey and I, you, uh, you, Mark, and Chris all drove to Bloodfest, right? Bloodfest in, in All Michigan, 14 right? hours. How long was it? 14 hours there one way. So. Did you do all the driving again? Just about. Mark Mark finished it up for me. Did the last, like, two, three hours, maybe. Are you the best driver? Is that why you, you don't like any other people <laughs> driving? No, I'm just a psychopath. Okay. I offered to drive many times. But he just never let me. This is this is Mark's way of offering to drive. I go, do you want to drive? He goes, I don't want to drive. He's like, <laughs> well, I never want to drive. That's not but true. I'll drive. Can you can you guys let me finish? Can you let me finish? <laughs> I'll let finish. you finish. No, he goes, I don't want to drive, 
But I will. <laughs> well, dude, what what am I going to say? Dude, I'm <laughs> so excited to fucking drive eight hours next to you in this hot box. No! Of course I don't want to fucking do it, but I'm your friend. I'm trying to help you drive, so I kept offering... Wow, wow, Mark. I enjoyed every minute of that trip being in that hot box next to you. What did you guys listen to on the way there? Oh, well, that's actually let me tell funny. You. <laughs> on, the ba- on the ride back, we didn't listen to anything. It was silence for eight, eight hours because the air conditioning didn't really work, which is okay. You can't expect that. But the windows were open because that was the only way we could stay a little bit cool. So the wind is just yelling in our fucking faces. And Caleb and I were pretty much silent for eight hours, talking here and there, playing like weird word association games, till the <laughs> point where we both went insane. Okay, the way there, I I have this burly Spotify uh, playlist that is like forty eight hours worth of music. So we listened to that. We listened to a bunch of podcasts, uh, Startup, Nerdist, a few others. I'm not remembering, but yeah, on the way back we played. There's this fun game. Would we start out with the band one or the movie one? We start no, out with like cele- like famous people, uh, celebs. Yeah, basically, you go through the alphabet. Or no, no. So that one, we would say like for instance, we'd say like Vin Diesel, and then Caleb would have to say someone whose first name started with D for Diesel, and then he'd be like Diana Ross, and then I'd have to be like uh, Rachel McAdams or something. You know what I mean? And so we for, did this. We did variations of this game for like three hours. <laughs> I was gonna say, what did, these, what did it last like five minutes? Like, we did no, bands. It was a long we did time. movies. We did the al- whole alphabet in a row. Oh, s- let me just explain the the details of the game a little bit more, so people listening can play along. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> nobody wants to play yeah, along. We're gonna play no, 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 during no. the podcast. Okay. So. so Let's say let's say Mark says Rachel McAdams. I have to do one with M. If I go Michael Myers, I get double points. That's two M. We we did the double M, like two. Well, rounds. you just said awesome. double points, but there's like no points. Yeah, we, just we don't kept actually. Saying, there oh, was I no one track. got points. I had eight hundred points. Yo, we did do like five <laughs> double M's in a row, though. Yeah, that, that was, was pretty sick. cool. That was, I, it was actually six. Dream six team, baby. Wow, this is riveting. This is riveting yeah. material. So actually, podcast. yeah, let's talk about the fest, right? <laughs> Modern Life, yeah, Modern Life is fest, War, yeah. Touche. They're uh, awesome. So you guys, you guys, you guys got there. It, how long, it took you fourteen hours to get there, give you or said? take. Yeah. Did you guys more, stop anywhere on like the way? Stop and stuff. No, slave driver. We go straight through pissing bottles. Yeah. If we're going next year, we need to go earlier and like actually make it feel like it. We did something productive. You know. Fuck Not you really. guys! Just silence. <laughs> I don't know here. what do you what do you mean productive? Well, like, it, it feels so ridiculous driving there all day. You get there late at night. You wake up. You do the I fest mean, all day, and then we get up early the next day. It's just like whatever, I mean, man. We got there at a reasonable time. We got there at like nine thirty at night, so it wasn't too bad. Chris, I know why we, we could have. We got there at eleven p.m. What are you talking we? about? I don't even yeah. remember. <laughs> well, dude, guys- honestly, what if we we left on Friday? What if we left on Thursday? And we did something cool in somewhere like we drove through, like Cleveland or something. You know what I mean? I would love to do that, but that also costs more money. Yeah, that's true. Wah, wah. Debbie Downer over here. <laughs> well, anyways, uh, so what did you what did you guys do once you got there? Um, we did the fest. That's it. Yeah, we went to this. We went to this coffee shop uh, early that morning, and the girl working was very flustered because we were there rated open. Oh, uh, did you order some ridiculous drink? Is that why? No, Mark. They had you know how coffee shops have like pictures of drinks on the wall. Yeah, <laughs> he played, there were there like were six- eight different pictures that all <laughs> looked kind of the same. Go ahead, Caleb. Go ahead. Yuck it up. He just pointed. Go ahead. There were like four pictures of like a milkshake thing, and he just pointed at one and says, "Can I have that?" <laughs> he's he's mad at me now. He's gone. He left. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't blame him. Yeah, Mark doesn't. Mark's not like a big mad. coffee guy. Like he basically drinks like he, like he doesn't drink coffee. No. Nah. Yeah, he wants like uh, some sugary sweetness thing. Yeah, yeah. He's like the guy that like uh, gets like extra extra in his coffee. It's basically not coffee. No, he just doesn't get coffee. I know. Well, 
actually, I get he gets fraps now, so he drinks Looks espresso. Like an espresso shot, so that that counts. All right. So you got to the after you got coffee, you got went to the fest. Uh, how was it? What was the vibe? What, what were uh, what were you doing there? I mean, we were just standing behind the table, just slinging dope slinging March, releases slinging left and right. Mark nice. is a natural born. DJ, I don't know. He's great. Mark's just trying to upsell people the whole time. Yeah, just like, oh, you want to buy this record? You, I'll give you another one, half off. Exactly. He's just upselling. He's like, let me show you this shirt. You look. <laughs> hold on a second. Let me. You're hug gonna look you. great in this shirt. He gives him a hug. He goes, yeah, you're a medium. <laughs> Hand, hands him a medium. They're like, how'd you know? He's like, I'm just vibing it out. Just mark the streamer. He knows everything. Um, Sold a lot of mugs. Mugs were a big hit. Yeah, you were. You, were, you were upselling those mugs? We weren't upselling them. People were just buying them. Nice. And you guys, obviously, did you guys get to see uh, Modern Life is War and Touche play? Yeah, not uh, the whole set. We all saw, like, oh, maybe Chris saw the whole sets. Yeah, yeah I got to, we had to switch got off. To watch them. Um, yeah. Any highlight, any bands, like, uh, that was a highlight for you there? Uh, I would say Touche and, and Modern Life. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. If now anybody was, if anybody's following us on Snapchat, uh, miserable Chris was just sending I was straight. Just fu- killing the Snapchat game, it was. Yeah, you could you could have watched that Modern Life Is War set. Yeah, follow us on Snapchat. Was it? It's just death. It's death or shank, right? Guys, why weren't we periscoping uh, yeah. sets from Bloodfest? Because you guys were Snapchatting oh, yeah, I didn't, them. I didn't even think about it. You guys, should, <laughs> you guys probably hit your data caps already. Oh, I did. I definitely did. <laughs> <laughs> I came uh, prepared. I didn't go over yet, but I'm probably close. Uh, you guys were explaining this to me because I've never been, but the, the fest is at like an abandoned... Is it an abandoned high school is it, or is it an actual... People it's a current it? high school. It's a current yeah. high school. Oh, it is a current. Yeah. Okay, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so literally Memorial Day weekend, these kids like go home and then like... I'm sure a lot of the kids come to the fest, but it's really cool. All the merch is set up in the gym and... Uh, there's a few of the smaller stages are just in classrooms. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's cool they let them do that, but like I'm I'm just amazed that they actually let them do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah. a it's a very progressive school, uh like district or whoever the people that are ahead of the schools or whatever. Yeah, That's pretty cool. A, a lot of younger kids there, which is awesome. Very cool. Gotta and it was in Howell, young. right? Howell, Mich- Michigan. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Well I'm glad you guys had a good time. So yeah, if uh if you have, have the chance to go to Bloodfest next year, you should do it. Thumbs up, right? Thumbs up. Two, two thumbs up. Two thumbs it's up. It's a very, Six. very well-oiled machine. The people right, are awesome. nice who run it, and it's done well. All right, cool. So, yeah, make sure you guys go next year if you missed it this year. So, All right, cool new tunes, Mark. Mark, bring us in. Do it like you've never done it before. All right, how about this? Ready? I'm going to do it this time, and you can edit this all out. But why don't you just take the best one and add it in every time? I've told you this multiple times mark people request that you do it live do it live man come on all right you want do you want to disappoint death talk nation or (laughs) yep the neighbors are probably moving out as we speak so cool yeah first up we have the los crudos discography it's a double lp from maximum rock and roll um, this thing's insane. It's got like 60 plus tracks on it. It's got a, I think, 38 page booklet with lyrics, show flyers, whole deal. Really good package. If you're a fan at all, definitely check this bad boy out. Um, we also got the new record from Mets. Um, any of you guys listen to Mets? Yeah, with I a do. Z? Yeah, I haven't awesome. heard that though. new record. I think it's, it's awesome. Good. Yeah, this is their second full length. I'm, I assume it's just entitled 2. It's got, like, the Roman numerals, too, so I'm going to say Mets, too. Um, we also got the Piss Jeans uh, Shallow remaster. This thing's also pretty awesome. It comes with a throbbing organ 7-inch, just a single. Um, yeah, we also got a bunch of uh, cool new tunes from Painter Man Records. Uh, new albums from Super Crush, Dissolve, Shore, New Gods. Uh, check those out. We're happy to have those up there. Um, long pause. All right, cool. 
We also, I'm really excited about this next one. We got tapes from Super Unison. This is um, Megan from Punch, her new band. She's playing bass and doing vocals, and these guys are fucking awesome. I love this uh, demo, uh, self-titled demo. Um, Definitely check this out. We have limited amount of tapes, so I'm sure they'll go fast because it's awesome. So definitely check that out if you haven't heard it yet. If you're a fan of Punch at all, definitely think it's something you'd like. So, um, And last but not least, we have so many awesome pre-orders up in the distro section. So if you that second drop down on the right side of the page, click that bad boy, go to the pre-orders, and you'll see everything we got up there. Uh, we've got stuff from Run for Cover, the new Citizen LP, the new Me Without You LP. Um, we also got pre-orders from Iron Pier. Uh, they're putting out new Wild Moth Flexi, uh, Hollow Sunshine, uh, Somerset Thrower, and Glory Kid also has two new pre-orders up from Moss Breaker and Where My Bones Rest Easy. So lots of pre-orders, lots to uh, keep track of, but they're all in one place for you, so go check it out. Cool. Thank you, Caleb. No problem. Thank you. And uh, it's it's everyone's favorite segment, Tour Time with Miserable Chris. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. So we have a, a two uh, new announcements. Uh, Modern Life is War in American Nightmare. Nightmare. Hey, you, said, you just said Nightmare. Nightmare yeah, kid. I know. It's such a Boston thing. Uh, Mario anyways. Brothers. <laughs> Uh, announced that they will be playing uh, this year's Riot Fest in uh, Chicago on September 11th through the 13th. Um, American Nightmare, uh, Converge, and Fucked Up all announced that they will be playing Fun 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 Fest in Austin, Texas on Too November much 6th through the 8th. Uh, so yeah, that's... Also, uh, we have Death Wish Fest Europe is underway. Uh, so make sure to get your tickets and head out to those shows. Cool. And yeah. We'll put a link to the in the show notes for like uh, where you can get tickets for the shows and stuff. But um, Yeah. Yes, go see that. Go see that. And, and again, I think we mentioned this before, but Caleb, we're having a sale on all Death Wish Fest affiliated say, artists, right? Yep. So where there's 20% off Converge, Harm's Way, Trap Them, Young and in the Way, basically all the Death Wish related stuff that we put out for them 20% off. We also did 20% off uh Bandcamp too. Okay. So, and is it, is it for records and their merch or just for the records? Both. Okay, cool. There we go. So yeah, save some money. Go pick those up. We also um those Deathwish Fest posters, we did a uh, all four in one bundle. So that's really cool. If you missed out on those, you can get them all in one one very petite those look super package. good yeah angela did a great job angela took all the photos yeah angela owens so uh and you'd save some money up. if you get them all for yeah save a couple bones cool uh sorry sorry chris i cut you off uh you're gonna totally tell people okay. you're gonna tell people where they can find more information about these tours uh, yeah, so for more uh, tour info and updates, uh, please visit deathwishinc.com slash tours. Awesome. Yay. Okay. Uh, feedback. We got, we got feedback. I love that people are using the hotline. We got another, uh, we got another uh, call. Uh, and we got some email. Uh, so let's, uh, let's, let's get going with those first. Uh, first one is a message from Evan from Wisconsin. Yo, so what up? This is Evan from Wisconsin. Just wondering what you guys' favorite breakdown is of recent memory. Thanks a lot. Bye. All right, guys. Uh, favorite breakdown in recent memory. This one's easy for me. Anyone else want to start? Rich, go ahead. You go first. Uh, this is easy. Uh, 100 Demons, Forsaken, uh, first song. Hum it for us. <laughs> no, I, I Come on, you were you were just doing it before we hit record. Do in the it. it's it's on in the eyes of the Lord. It's the first song on that record. I my my whisper scream is really good. <laughs> this is go to. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's uh, my favorite. It's pretty on point. That's easy for me. Yeah, I'm a big as you guys know. I'm a big Hunter Demons fan. So I'm gonna say all their breakdowns are the best breakdowns. But uh, uh, that one for me. When I hear that song come in, 
uh, I don't know. I just like, I just get enraged. I just love it so much. Uh, Chris. Okay. Uh, mine is any breakdown that Caleb played in his high school medical metal core <laughs> band. Uh, I don't. I've never listened to it, but I, I imagine that it's awesome. Caleb, and- what was the name of your high school metal core band? Fuck you. Come That's on. That's what it's called. What is it called? <laughs> no, I I need to check and make sure nothing exists from it. Ah, oh, fuck. No, there were a few. Come on, man. There Just, were a few. There was the front line. There was Claret Scare. Um, Would you guys sound like a Trey? You? It was. It was metal. It was straight up metalcore. That's what it we sounded like. like. Uh, what was the band? What was it? Norma Jean? Yeah, sure. Oh yeah. shit! Yeah, we were listening to breakdowns from Norma Jean. Uh, <laughs> Terms of Life Fest. And I didn't good. realize. I don't know. Maybe we'll catch Fleck for saying this, Fleck. But um, I realized. Bless the martyr, kiss the child. There's no, there's no music. It's like the bare minimum of a song. It's literally one note, just dig it get just different rhythms. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, I never realized that. No, notes are for posers. Yeah, it's like. Well, I don't want to ruin it. But I know what Mark's into this week. I don't want. Uh, I don't want to skip ahead. Oh, it's funny that you know what I'm into because I don't. The breakdown <laughs> app. Oh yeah, that is sick. I mean, late pass. That's been around a while. But Caleb, do you have a favorite breakdown? I'm gonna say. I, I think I know what you're gonna say. Really? Go ahead, and guess. I mean, hate breed, obviously. I would. I don't know if that qualifies as a breakdown. You're gonna tell me there's no breakdown in that song. The best. The best. The best hate breed. The best hate. Whole song's a breakdown. Every best- hate breed, every hate breed <laughs> song is a breakdown. Rich, the best hate breed breakdown is perseverance. <laughs> obviously, no, that's pretty solid too. Yeah. Okay, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and agree with you. Perseverance got the better breakdown, but I think I will be heard is a better song. Yeah, is that fair? That's, that's the hit. Yeah. All right. That's fine. That's fine. High, high school Caleb is just rollerblading around, just being heard. <laughs> rollerblading, <laughs> <laughs> rollerblading the hate breed. <laughs> it's so, so good. I didn't even rollerblade. I don't know. I'm yes, just you did. That's okay, I rollerblade too. I'll rollerblade. I mean, I had I had rollerblades, but it wasn't <laughs> something I like did. Yo, me and you were gonna rollerblade this summer. We should wear yeah. some short shorts. We just gotta make sure we get we wear our um, wrist protect. What are those wrist protectors when you rollerblade? Yep. Yeah. Which I'm thankful for because now I can use you, my wrist. You don't want to scrape that shit. I thought it was more for breaks. What on your wrists? Like why would you break with your wrists? No, no, not break. Like you don't want to break your wrist. It's to prevent you from breaking your wrist. Oh, you, I don't when know. You, if you that try would to help. you try to I thought break it was your just like not like not, like scrape your wrist if you fell down. Well, it's gonna help with that too. People look like such, like, fucking assholes when they roll a blade. Yep. You should see Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Booty shorts, no shirt, no shirt, no shirt. Mark How did you guys to- know what I do on the weekends? <laughs> Dude, <laughs> you live two minutes from the office. So, yeah, yeah you, know. you blade over every morning and change in your office. Yo, that is actually a really cool idea. I should get a pair of rollerblades. <laughs> you should For get a scooter. Two-minute walk. It just, started, scooter. it just started raining kind of heavy here, so I don't know if it's going to yeah. show up in the podcast. But I hope you can hear thunder. This will be so be cool. cool. Um, okay. <laughs> That's it for the breakdown uh, question. Uh, we also got Wait, an Mark email. didn't answer. Did you have one, Mark? Oh, Mark, yeah, did you have one? Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I would just, whenever I think about, I, when I heard this question earlier, I think about the last song on the last nails full length i don't know what it's called Uh, yeah but then there's that part where it goes like and it just is like it's fantastic what are you talking about abandon all life yeah the last song uh, oh i was okay never mind i was humming on silent death cool um we also got an email from tim uh one of his questions was whatever happened to shipwreck um, That's a good think... ass question, Tim. <laughs> they're, they're still, I mean, they're still kind of around, just not. Yeah, super they don't play active. very often. They played Deathwish Fest, which was awesome this year. Yeah, where were you, um, Tim? Or last year? Um, they don't obviously play too often. I don't know if there's going to be a new record or anything in the horizon, but it could be. I don't really know. I remember. Um, 
Rich, you can take this out if you want, but can you, like, I remember before I worked here reading about stuff on the B9 about uh, they had, like, all these demos done for this crazy concept album. Is that true? And it just never happened? Uh, I, I don't remember that, to be honest. Uh, uh, I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I couldn't tell you that for sure. Okay. Uh, but if they write a new record, they write a new record one day, but that'd be cool. Um, but yeah, for, for, as of now, they, they, they play some select shows throughout the year, but, uh, not too many. I don't know if they've even played another show since Death Wish Fest, but yeah, you'll see them once in a while. We keep the records in press, you know, Abyss just got repressed, so. Um, that's cool. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's it. That's it for, um, that's it for questions. So I don't think I mentioned this at the beginning, but yeah, if you have a question, just use the hashtag ask death talk on Twitter. Uh, you can email death talk at deathwishinc.com or, uh, which seems to be pretty popular these days. Uh, call the death with death talk hotline at seven, five, four, seven, zero D talk. That's seven, five, four, seven, zero, three, Eight two five five, and uh, yeah, leave us uh, leave your first name and where you're from, and a brief message, and we'll play it on the podcast, just like we did uh, Evan from Wisconsin's question. So do that, be a part of the show. We'll put it all in the show notes too. So if you want to grab the information from there, so um, let's uh, move on. Oh, we have, we actually have one more. I forgot about this one. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't, uh, I had to move down to another page, but, uh, this is from, you can actually use the, uh, you can use, uh, Tumblr to send us questions too. Um, this is from sad dash penis. <laughs> what? So that's what it says. I don't know, man. I didn't that's make that up. That's his username, man. Um, this one says, uh, Caleb is still adorable. Oh, D- thanks, sad penis. <laughs> D&D is rad as hell. Let a boy live. That's referring to Chris, who yes. is a D&D superstar. Dude, I want him to talk about it more. He's the one who won't say anything. Uh, what, uh, oh, you're, what do you want to know, man? What Everything. Do you know? Chris, you're a troll, right? What are you again? I'm an elf. Oh. A ranger. <laughs> that so. still makes me laugh. <laughs> okay. Uh, all, and he says, sad penis also says, uh, also, there's a Kickstarter out for a tabletop RPG computer simulator. That might be worth checking out. You guys rule. Thank you, Sad Penis. Yeah, thank you. I will. I will check that out. So, Chris, yeah. So, if you're into those real life sort of games, Chris, like Chris, um, unlike myself, uh, you can you can do that. Well, Rich doesn't like human interaction. No, so no he avoids that. Here. So. All right, uh, what we're into? Let's move on to what we're into. Um, mine's easy. Uh, not having not having shit in my bathtub is what I'm really into right now. Um, having a bathtub with no shit in it. So, is how long preferable. has it been since you showered? No, I shower. I, I showered today. Oh, so it, you just you just showered in the shit. No, no, no. Caleb, I, I that waited. was his. That's his third bathroom. No, that's my third bathroom. Don't have one bathroom. bathroom. No, I was just trying to make it seem like he's stanky. Come on, that's my downstairs bathroom. Um. Uh. Anyone else into things that you're into? Um, I'm into designing this new record that I'm putting out. What are you using? MS Paint. Yes. Is it? It's. It's. A, it's Obviously. It's. It's all bitmap paint. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> An original yeah, piece. Actually, I'm actually just gonna scan it and just print it out. Cool. What do it that can way. you can you tell can you say what the record is for? Uh, it's for uh, my label that I do. Um, oh, it's a secret. Yes, it's a, it's kind of a secret right now. So okay, it's a secret. You can't say any information. So can't say. It's, it's good. Probably. He played it for us on the uh, trip to Bloodfest. It's awesome. It's uh, it's Caleb's boy band. No, uh, Rich, you mastered uh, part of it. So. Oh, I did. Okay, cool. I know yeah. what it is then. Um. <laughs> That's nice of you, Rich, to master Caleb's boy band's demo. Yeah, yeah. I mean, someone's got to do it. True. Thanks, man. Uh, More loud, loud. <laughs> Caleb, what are you into this week? Um, Mad Max. Well, that's a little. That's a. That's a little tease for the next. The the next segment that we're gonna do. I'm into actually like a lot of things this week, but I'll stick with. I Mad mean, Max. we have time. Like, do you want to just name them all? 
Uh, nah. Okay, fine. I'm just saying that, Chris, I don't have any enjoyment in my life. Oh, yeah, that's true. You're going away tomorrow. That's cool. Oh, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to New Orleans. So, I'll be into that next week, though. We'll talk about that next okay. week. Okay. Get some cool. gumbo or something. I'm going to get some po' boys. Some, some Rita's. Get some Rita's in you. Um, Mark, what, what's going on this week? What are you doing? Uh, I like, I, I don't know what I'm doing, but I, I like the, uh, I've talked about this before in the podcast, but there's a podcast that Caleb and I both like called Startup that just started doing their second season. Oh, just you and th- Caleb like that podcast? <laughs> We've never talked about it, Chris. Once it's yeah, we so have. good. Yeah, we have. Miserable. We have so, talked about it. Startup is so good. Yep, startup's good. So Chris listens to it too, everybody. Um, yeah. <laughs> startup is cool, and you should listen to it. They're they started their own company. Like that was there was following this dude starting his own company the first season, and now they're doing someone else's company for the second season, and it's really cool. It's a dating website, very interesting. So it's called Startup. Go listen to it. We'll put a link in the show notes. Show notes. Exactly. For everybody, send in your uh, your requests for Chris to join the dating site on startup so we can give you updates from the inside it's really funny caleb if anyone's gonna join the dating site it's gonna be caleb Caleb. it would be caleb dude i'm already on there (laughs) I'm, i'm not i'm not no one said anything um that is Cool, we are done with what we're into, and uh, we're going to do the outro now, but there's actually more to come after this. We're going to do Film School with Rich Special Mega Super Championship Edition. Spoiler alert, warning. Rich, do you want me to to tell you what you're doing next year? uh, Year, next week, do you want to say that up uh, Let me close out the show and uh, let people, uh, yes, you'll, you'll, you'll tell me that afterwards, but... Uh, yeah, that's that's it for uh, episode 18 of Death Talk. Uh, you can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Just search Death Wish Inc. Or your preferred podcast app. Do the same thing. Search Death Wish Inc. Uh, we put every episode up on YouTube. So go to youtube.com slash Death Wish Inc. And you can listen to them there. Uh, share it with your friends. Tell them, tell them you're into it. We need more subscribers. Yay, we love subscribers. Uh, <laughs> uh, and... Uh, if you want to be a part of the show, again, email us at deathtalk at deathwishing.com. Use the has- hashtag AskDeathTalk on Twitter. and uh, Or call the Death Talk hotline. It's, uh, I don't know what it is off the top of my head. I'm going to look it up right now. 754-70-DETALK. That's 754-703-8255. And, uh, yeah, if you've seen Mad Max and want to continue listening, please do. And if you haven't, uh, turn this off. And, and go uh, see a- it. Yeah, go see it and then put a reminder to listen to this uh, part of the show later. Hey, so, can I also say something else? Yes. If you're listening to it on iTunes and you have a second and you like the show, if you're one of the people who like the show, just uh, rate it. Doesn't that help things? Mm-hmm. Actually, I'm going to – yes, yes, rate it. But actually, yeah, just um, give, it, give it a couple stars. Here's what I want you to do. I want, you to, go on, I want you to go on iTunes. You don't even have to put a comment. Just give us five stars and put who who is your favorite person on Death Talk. Just just I'm gonna take a vote. I'm gonna say Mark's gonna win because he's he's of, the most likable. Of course, Mark's gonna win. Yeah, um, but maybe you like Chris. Maybe maybe Chris, Chris is, your is the favorite. adorable secret that everyone like thinks about all the time. Yeah, he's <laughs> mysterious. <laughs> so go on there, give us five stars, and then just put like Chris or Mark or Scumbag Rich. Caleb. Rich. If you do you like realize? Caleb, put Scumbag Caleb. <laughs> You realize last place is going to be a competition between me and you now. Oh, yeah. No one likes me. Everyone thinks I'm an asshole. I realize that. And, uh, you, and you guys have made sure everyone thinks I'm a scumbag. Well, yes. People know that now. They know something that's not true. Well, that's... that's uh, I wouldn't say it's not true. Yeah, what is guys. true and what is false? Okay, everyone. They pull the same bullshit every week. <laughs> the podcast, we stop recording... And I say, I tell, I tell them, everyone thinks I'm a scumbag. People are coming up to me at Bloodfest, like, "Yo, you're <laughs> scumbag, Caleb." <laughs> I mean, and, the, and they go, "Oh, sorry, right. man. We know you're not a scumbag." But you ever heard that. of like just terms like in people being endearing? 
that's not a term. That's not how that works. <laughs> yeah, it is, dude. <laughs> but do that. Just give us five stars. Put who you like the best, and um, I don't know. I don't know what we're gonna do for whoever wins. Whoever wins uh, gets their own podcast. You vote. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Thanks for listening, and continue listening if you want to hear us talk about Mad Max. Fury All right. Road. All right, it's it's Mad Max time. So uh, this is Film School with Rich, the uh, segment where uh, Caleb makes me watch movies because I haven't seen many movies. Um, this is Trey's favorite segment. Actually, the, he actually said the only reason he listens to the podcast, he doesn't like the other parts. <laughs> <laughs> he just likes, just likes the movie part. Um, uh, so typically I would watch uh, a classic or like, you know, a, well, a well-reviewed well-received movie. Um, but we, we switched it up a little bit, and Caleb, Trey, I, I, and I went to go see a brand new movie, which we didn't know if it was going to be good or not. Took a, took a little bit of a gamble on this one, yeah. but it so paid we saw, off. We saw uh, Mad Max. And again, Mad Max is brought to you by Caleb and the Death Wish Store. Exactly. Uh, Caleb, what do you have to offer uh, the people this week? What do I have to offer? Hmm. Um, let's just say 20% off the entire store. No, 20% off? Did I say 20? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I, I, was, I, was Googling, I was Googling something. <laughs> <laughs> what do I have to offer them, Rich? Yeah. Let's just say, hmm, 10% off the entire store? <laughs> Not as good sound? as 20%, but... <laughs> <laughs> Use the coupon code FURIOSA. That's... Oh. That's F U R I O S A. Okay, Furiosa. Remember Use that, that is? get 10% off your order. store.deathwishing.com. All right, cool. Let's let's get right into it. Let's 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 set up the scene. Let's let's tell the people what we did. What we do, Rich? All right. Get so us we there. went to we 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 what, decided to make this You haven't been to a movie theater since The Dark Knight, correct? Correct. Yes, I saw The Dark Mo- Knight. In an, in an IMAX theater. So I don't remember the last time I actually went to, like, a, a movie, like, in a... No, a standard is that real? Is that, are, is that just a thing you say, or that's a real fact? That's a fact. Yeah, that's the last it's movie. It's been I've... seven years? Has it been that long? 2008. That came out in 2008, dude. Bro, I'm, I'm behind. Alright, yes. continue. Yes, that's what I saw. Uh, <laughs> um, and things have Not... changed a bit, Caleb. We, oh went, my... to like a, we went to a ni- nice, newer built theater right yeah okay let me just say i go to i go to the movies all the time this theater was insane this is the nicest theater i've ever been so even to. you were impressed by the theater i was very impressed and then trey was like this isn't even like the nicest one that's around here so i'm pretty sure we're hitting up the nicer one come san andreas time <laughs> so we went to a theater that had like nice like reclining seats Leather. and like and like and like and like uh, cup holders and that fold uh, up so you can cuddle. Me and Rich held each other the entire <laughs> film. <laughs> Caleb and I sat in the love seat. Yes, um, and it was in three D. It sure was. Rich, so, have you have you ever seen a three D movie? Uh, I did. I saw Jackass three D, <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't as impressive. So I don't know, Caleb. Do you know like what sort of like resolution the movies are in at the movie theater like i don't know is it like is it's better than 1080 is it like 4k i don't know like what do you oh, know what that is yeah it's definitely better than 1080 i don't know what res i don't know what resolution that would be because um, i was nervous that the 3d the 3d was gonna like have a negative effect on how it looked well it definitely very- did you probably didn't notice because you'd have to see the film in both versions so like the problem yeah. with 3d um, especially like post conversion 3D. Well, it's like first of all, it's like blurry, and also the theaters don't project it as brightly as they should, and it ends up being way darker. Plus, you're I was going to say it did. It, now the movie looked really good. Like, let the, me. Yes, it looked the movie. Great. The movie's very bright. Um, but I did thought I did think it was a little darker than I thought it would be. And, but mm-hmm. it was very clear and crisp, and it, everything yeah. looked it looked nope. really nice. Yeah, no problems there. And this was a post conversion 3D movie for anybody who cares. So let's just talk about that for a little bit. Let's just talk about um, the look and, and feel of the movie. Um, 
uh, very vibrant colors. Uh, it looked like it. It looked too Absolutely good. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, you know, it looked like too good. Is that like a weird thing to say? It looked like too, like too glossy. Like it seemed like it was fake. But I think I oh, read. I didn't think so at all. It felt no, no, very no. real I, to it me. It seemed like unnatural how good it looked. But I, I read, or maybe I saw this, but there's no, is there no CGI in the movie? No, there's definitely CG. It's oh, just okay. Most, most, most of the stunts, probably, if not all the stunts, are practical. So, like, people are doing that. Okay. I was going to say, like, of there course they, something, right? They CG out, like, the harnesses, shit like that. Yeah, And, like, yeah. remember the big, um... Did I say CG? Is it CG or CGI? It's both. It doesn't oh, matter. Okay. Some people... CG uh, is just one last, uh, letter. One okay. less letter. But yeah, like that big um storm cloud thing they they uh they Yeah, chased. that had to be, yeah. That yeah, to be. that was all CG. Yeah. So yeah, there's yeah. definitely CG in the movie, but it's mostly practical. It looked incredible. Like uh That that's the one word I would use to describe the whole movie. It was I've never incredible. seen a movie look that good. I just ha I I mean I haven't seen very many, obviously, but it yeah, just and you and you mentioned how bright and vibrant and like amazing the colors are. I just want to point out that George Miller, the director, has said um, his ideal version of the film is black and white. He loves black and white films, and if he had it his way, Fury Road would be black and white. Really? And I mean, I haven't obviously I haven't seen it in black and white, but I have to say, I'm glad that didn't happen because the colors yeah, are insane in this. It looks great. Yeah. Um, they make so, the desert look awesome. <laughs> Caleb, you've seen all the other... How many Mad Maxes have there been? Three? Yes. This is the fourth. Okay. So it was a continuation of the story? It's not a remake of an... It's, of a, it's like a little bit different than normal. Like, it's not quite... I guess it's you would call it a sequel. It's just a different actor um, okay. playing Mad Max. But basically, George Miller, um, his, like idea or his basically setup for these films is that it's just kind of like they just take place in the world and they're just like one-off stories within this world and mad max is just kind of the vehicle to take you through whatever story because like, yeah. i don't know if you noticed but this film is mostly about furiosa okay okay um so yeah you're you're you uh Mad Mad Max is a gentleman in the movie, uh, played by who again? Who is this again? Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy. I'm, I get it. I'm 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 an idiot. I don't know who that is. I, he, I mean, he's, he he's done a lot of stuff, but probably nothing you would be interested or care about. Look, it'll be a hard day, but I guarantee you that 160 days ride that way. There's nothing but salt. At least that way, you know, we might be able to... Together. Come across some kind of redemption. I gotta say, the one criticism criti criticism that I have of him is that I, he was tough to understand what he was saying in the movie. I feel like that was definitely intentional. Um, I, I actually He had a Bane that. feel to he him. Huh? A Bane from Batman feel to him. Ba Bane <laughs> from Dark Knight. Like, his voice That's was tough to... It's funny you say that, because he played Bane. <laughs> oh, did he really? <laughs> I didn't know that. That's, yeah, that's so him. sick you said that. That's amazing. Dude, you're you're spot on. Okay, wow. I'm like, I'm like awesome. I had no clue. I honestly had no clue. Yeah, because he had, I could like, it was just difficult to understand. I had no clue that he played Bane. Wow. Yeah, he's um, definitely, he's going for like a weird Australian accent. And he yeah. also like, first of all, he has maybe like, four lines of dialogue plus like a monologue in the beginning and he mostly just speaks and grunts which yeah is he doesn't have awesome. much doesn't talk much in the movie uh but he was He's good like, i i he was good i don't think he was i liked him a lot he was like a wild animal like yeah no i think he was good i uh i don't think like he, his role had like the most i don't want to i don't know no they're really say. i know what you're saying there's, there wasn't much there. It was mostly about Furiosa, and he's mm -hmm. just kind of like this feral animal that like gets taken along and like helps out. Yeah, and Charlize Theron, Theron is that how you say it? Theron. I would, I think Theron. Theron. I, okay, yeah. she's in it too, and she is missing an arm. 
Yeah, did you hear? She actually lost an arm, and they had to, like, write that into the script. That's not true at all. Damn it. That's not true at all. I uh, wanted to convince you of that. So, uh, she's in the movie, um, Missing an Arm. She was great. I, I, yeah. I don't have a bad thing to say about her. Yeah, she She's good. always solid. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that arm looked sick. So, it didn't look fake at all. So, Caleb, I, I don't know how you feel, but I'm going to give you my opinion on... on the uh, the story was fine. I don't think the story was strong. I don't think it was uh, anything anything like uh, oh my god, I wasn't expecting that to happen, or anything that was like super surprising. But it was a good story. Um, but I mean, the movie itself is. I'm really glad I saw the movie in a theater. I'm exactly. glad that that it's just one of those movies. People always say, like, it's one of those movies you have seen in theater to really appreciate. And that's completely true with this movie. Like, Agreed. don't m- make sure you see it in a movie if you're going to see it. You'll have a, you'll have a second rate, um, experience if you watch it at home. I don't care how good your TV or surround sound or whatever it is. Uh, go see this in the movies before you, before, if you do want to see it, in which you should see it. I'm going to say that right now. You should see this movie. It's go see it. Do it. Yes, it's very good. But the story itself is fine. I'm not going to say anything negative about it, but I wasn't blown away. It's not like, you know, I, yeah. I just watched this movie, obviously, because you told me to. Uh, Seven, it wasn't like one of these, like, mind-bending, you know, yeah. really intense I mean, sort of things. But it's a different kind of movie. But um, Yeah, it's more of an action movie. I'd say yeah. the story is totally fine. It's, there's, like you said, it, there's nothing crazy going on. The more, more of what I like um want to applaud the film for is not necessarily the like the story like plot wise but like the world like sure the the plot is basic but like the story it's telling you is absolutely amazing like everything in this world like okay so basically a lot of movies people say like oh my god the world building is amazing but There is no world building in this movie. The world is already built. And we're Mm. just, like, seeing shit. And it is, like, next level how good everything in this is. Like, just little glimpses into everything. And it doesn't doesn't hold your hand and, like, explain everything. It's just, like, shit happens. And you... Hopefully you catch on. Like, when they go to chase down Furiosa, they show, like, that big... um, I don't know what you'd call it, like that big mountain of the wheels and stuff. Like it's yeah. this big ritual. They go to grab their wheels and everything. And like the war boys, when they when they spray the uh, the chrome paint, spray paint. Yeah, I didn't get that. What Exa- was that all about? Exactly. That's that's like what I'm talking about. Like it's like I the guess over- they don't overly explain the anything. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, the overarching it's just like this story. Is what we do. Like this yeah, is yeah. this is the world we're in, and like here's the plot. That's pretty simple and basic, but like try to figure out the story i don't yeah. know if i'm explaining myself well at all but it i absolutely yeah. loved that and like like all the cars let's say for example all the cars are fucking amazing and they all not only are they like visually l- look awesome they're functional too like every single car has a specific function like they have like the the two cars that they chase up behind and like attach and then they throw down the anchor there's the cars with the um the guys on like the i don't know what you would call them like those Those, like those like skinny poles that would like yeah those that would be cool there's those dudes there's the fucking the people from bullet town like with the tank kind of cars yeah like everything everything in the world is like exists it's functional it makes sense i like the big guy in that car with the nipple clamps (laughs) do you like him playing with them (laughs) <laughs> that was odd. <laughs> that Yo, did you like? Weird. Did you like new metal guitar guy? Yes, that guy was that fucking so awesome. Fucking literally, cool. that. So I don't know what that guy's function was. Was he literally just supposed to be like like slaying on the guitar? Okay, like, yes, okay. Was, I guess I just went on this big rant about everything being functional. I, he's not super functional. But he literally just rips cool. the whole time. He's just like going nuts. Yeah. <laughs> that um, was really cool. Um. I th- see. I figured you would hate that. I thought you would tune out. And be like, "This is too comical. Fuck this." I mean, it did. It was a little. It was a little. It was. I don't want to say cheesy. It wasn't cheesy, but like, it was definitely. Uh, I don't. I don't know. 
don't know what the right word is, but can you explain to me this? Uh, since I've never seen the other movies, do we know? Do we know why the world is like it is? Like, do we know? Is is it explained in the other movies? Um, or is this just where you are, and like this is where you are, and they don't really explain like why you're there? I honestly, I, sh- I should have prepared a little bit better for this. I haven't seen the older ones in a long, long time. Okay. Sent- Probably well, like there's no six like, plus years. I'm, there's no they like might story. Say, they might say explicitly what and why it happens, but I don't. I don't remember what that is. Yeah. So they are, uh, obviously a part of the older movies isn't like, hey, everything was great before this. You know, well, sand like the, dust just took over everything. Yeah, well, you know I mean, what I mean? Like the like first Mad Max takes place before the apocalypse. He's just kind of like he's a cop, and oh, okay, okay. So there was his some family sort gets of murdered, and happened. he goes on like a revenge. It's like a revenge tale. Okay. And then the second one, Road Warrior, takes place post-apocalypse. And I was talking okay. to Trey; he was telling me about this. He's like, "Yeah, they kind of like retcon the whole first Mad Max in the beginning of the Road Warrior, and they say how like Mad Max takes place um, post-apocalypse, but it doesn't really. So I don't know. I I didn't get the chance to rewatch them. Unfortunately, I wanted to, but okay, yeah, okay. I don't know for sure. They might say. Um, it. So the movie, the movie's about two hours long, right? About? I think it's, I think it's like two exact. Yeah, um, it's like seventy five percent action. Like, there's not a lot of downtime in the movie. Yeah. Like, you're literally moving <laughs> and doing something the whole time, which I really did appreciate. I like. I like when action movies are action movies and you're just doing something the whole time and there's not really a lot of, like, uh, you know, stuff, like, kind of, like, you know, like, uh, oh, oh, it's not letting down. It's not, it's not like, uh, slowing down, I guess. Exactly. I mean, there's, like, you know, there's peaks and valleys, but yeah. and it, but it's not, like, overwhelming. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm sure a lot of people would say it's overwhelming, but yeah. I was totally into it. I gotta say, like, throughout the movie, I was just kind of, like, shocked. I was, like, shocked the whole movie. You know what I mean? Like, you're just, like... What's gonna happen next? Exactly. Like, what are they gonna awe. do? Like, yeah, ah, that's probably and better. It's, and it's all fucking real. Like, it's all these maniacs doing this. Yeah, you're just watching to see like what kind of ridiculous car is gonna pull up and try to like destroy you know the other car or like they were dri- what, what was the thing called? Like their big truck? Like they had a name for it. War rig. It what is it? The war rig. The war rig. Yeah, you're just like, man, is the war rig gonna get like knocked over or blown up from this thing and. It, um, it does in the Road Warrior. So, yeah. So, uh, I mean, we didn't really talk really much about the story, but like, uh, I mean, maybe I'm stupid for saying this, but the story is just kind of secondary. I feel like the the real the movie is a, is an action movie, like shit blowing up the whole time. Like, like uh, it's great. Uh, it's uh, I awesome. obviously haven't seen very many newer movies, but. Um, uh, this one is I'd, I'd is, say is great. I have seen a lot of newer movies, and this is one of the best ones I've seen in many, many years. This is definitely like one of my favorite movies ever. Now, can and you also, tell? Can sorry, you, tell you, were, me you were talking the about the. It, sorry, it, 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 I just wanted before we change subjects. Don't forget what you're going to say. I just, I just wanted to give a little shout out. You were talking about the vehicle action, all real, all fucking amazing, but also that fight scene earlier on. Is Which one specifically? When he's chained up to um, the war boy, still, remember? Oh, yeah, when he's, like, on the front of the car? Uh, no, after that, when he, so, after that battle, and then he goes around the corner and sees the um, uh, the girls, and he's still chained to the war boy, but he's knocked out. Oh, yeah, yeah, out. okay, yeah. That, like, he, and he fights Furiosa, that fight was fucking awesome. That was good. That was one of, like, the coolest, like, physical, like, fight scenes I've seen. And mm. it's, like, I feel like it was just, like, oh, yeah, here's a quick little thing in between, like, the big action set pieces. Like, that was a little one, and I feel like that's better than most movies' set pieces, you know? So, what, um... No, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> Sorry. No, 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 What? Oh, yeah, I don't know what I was going to say. What other uh, movies has this director done? Do you know? Okay, <laughs> I'm very glad you asked. I wanted to talk about George Miller. Do you know how old this guy is? No clue. No. He's 70. Cool. Can you believe a 70-year-old made this movie? Yeah. 70 is the new 50. Okay, well, yeah. He basically has done Mad Max, The Road Warrior, 
now this Mad Max Fury Road, and he's done Happy Feet. <laughs> no joke. Happy Feet? Was that like a Disney movie or something? That was the Penguins, remember? The uh, all I don't CG know that penguins. One. Oh, okay. Well, he did Happy Feet. Um, he's done some other stuff, too. I think he's produced a lot of stuff, but I feel like Mad Max is definitely his baby. Okay. Which is, you know, good baby to have. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't, I, I don't have much more to say. It was a really great movie, and it's, it's almost difficult to talk about the movie. Like, why? I don't really know why I liked it so much. I mean, it, um, yeah. I, I, I'm gonna say like I just love the action and things blowing up and fights and all that stuff. And that stuff is so good in this movie that it's enough to carry it, no matter really. I don't want to say it's like Fast and the Furious, where like you you, you literally watch that movie for the uh, you know the racing and stuff like that. You don't really like, the story is like second. You know who cares really about that? It's not definitely not like that cheesy. It's but it's uh um I'm gonna get shit for this. I know it. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna get so much shit for this. Uh, but uh yeah, the the action just speaks on itself. Like that could that I mean I feel like the movie could have no story at all and i would still like it you know what i mean it could just be people racing in the desert well let me tell you rich it doesn't have any story at all and everyone likes it so there you go (laughs) all right so there you go there you go and caleb this inspired me so much that i want to go back to the movies to see san andreas with you and i told you that I yeah I'm very glad. Do you want to you want to see it in like 3D the whole the whole spiel right? I feel like you have to. I yeah San Andreas looks like it's a fucking roller coaster ride more than a movie. <laughs> yeah, don't get um, me wrong. I'm into. I'll see it. I I said that I think I think The Rock is the new is the modern day Will Smith now. Yo, The Rock's awesome. He's charismatic. <laughs> I don't think he's Will Smith level, but he's Not definitely yet. nah. Will His Smith show on HBO is, looks terrible. I will watch it. <laughs> You're just that big of a fan. <laughs> I'm not like a huge The Rock fan, but I feel like it's pretty hard. I, I like how I just called him The Rock. but um, <laughs> Mr. Rock. Yeah, Mr. The Rock. Um, I'm not like a huge fan or anything, but like he's he's awesome. I like him. <laughs> All right. he's, he's got charisma. Uh, any, any final thoughts on... Um, uh, Mad Max Fury Road. I mean, again, this is another one that I could geek out about for a long time, but I'll I'll spare everybody. Are you ready for what what's next week? All right. Yes. What's what's next week? I'm sure I'm sure Trey's gonna kill us for not talk. I'm sure we're forgetting some stuff. Oh, I mean, Max, the second but... he listens to this, so this is what. So Trey is our is probably our uh, biggest uh, critic. Definitely. The, the, we we get like live commentary when he's listening to like the the podcast before we like put it up, and uh, yes, so he's gonna. I don't know what the hell he's gonna say about this one, but uh, Caleb, what am I? What am well, I gonna be watching I guess next week? We should also say Trey loved Mad Max too. Did he? Well, he didn't talk to me about it because he wanted to wait. Yeah. Well, he he loved it. We talked about it a lot afterward. Cool. I don't okay. want to speak for him too much, but yeah. All right. It was so. What am I? What am I watching next? Jaws. Wow. I I figured that one was coming up soon. It's the summertime. Yeah, you shithead. I figured it was coming up soon because you know I I've and I've never seen it. Um, that's insane. But I don't I'm, know why you've heard, I, you've heard a lot about it, right? Yeah, and you know what? I think I've seen like like you know I'm probably flipping through channels and it's like on it. It's on like USA or something like that. Maybe I saw like a scene or two, but like I've never seen it at all so i'm really glad what's your like what are your thoughts on it what do you think you know about it anything i i I don't know i i know i know it's about a shark (laughs) (laughs) i know this is what this is my limited knowledge is that it's about a uh it's it's about the summertime people are on vacation they're chilling in the water and a fucking shark tries to eat them that's that's right well, and we'll see. And uh, Richard Dreyfus is in mm-hmm. this movie. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's all I know. So I will be watching Jaws for the next episode of Film School with Rich. It's a good one, I think. And yeah, like I- uh, uh, you said, like if anyone has any film suggestions, send them over to Caleb. 
Uh, you can send them over to deathtalk at deathswishing.com or email Caleb. Caleb at deathswishing.com. Oh, you motherfucker. You tweet, Why not? tweet at me. Tweet at him, yeah. What's your Twitter handle? I think it's just Caleb Gowett. <laughs> at Caleb Gowett. I think so. I or know. you can tweet at me and call me an idiot. I'm at underscore Rich, Ro- Rich Rossi. So. Uh, don't um, call him an idiot, but make fun of him for not liking Raiders. Yes, you can make fun of me for that. Uh, so... That's it. That's it for the podcast. I hope you guys liked it. And if you uh, want us to watch more newer movies, we'll do that too. I, w- I always have a great time hanging out with Caleb outside of work. Not. Uh, but. <laughs> you can lie all you want. You were a giddy little schoolboy. I did have a good time. Okay. Uh, so that's it. Uh, thanks for listening to Death Talk episode 18. And um, enjoy the rest of your day. Whatever you're doing. Go see Mad Max. Do Go it. Go see Mad Max. Bye. <laughs>